Welcome to MicroScan's Introduction to Machine Vision, an educational webinar series to help new users better understand the basics of machine vision technology. This is the third presentation in our series, and in this installment, we'll talk about the key parts of a vision system. If you've tuned into our previous presentations, then you're already familiar with some of the applications of machine vision and the benefits it brings to the production process. There are typically five components that make up a machine vision system. They include the lighting, lens, sensor, vision processing, and communication. Here you can see two examples of different types of machine vision systems. On the left is a system made up of assembled components, which includes a PC and a camera along with external lighting to illuminate the part. On the right is an integrated system, or smart camera, where all of these components are built into a single device. Choosing the right configuration depends on the requirements of your application. Lighting is a critical piece because it illuminates the part to be inspected, allowing its features to stand out so that the camera can clearly see them. Next, you have the lens, which captures the image and presents it to the sensor in the form of light. The sensor in a machine vision camera converts this light into a digital image, which is then sent to the processor for analysis. Vision processing consists of algorithms that review the image and extract required information. Then the system will run whatever measurements or other processes it has been instructed to run. Finally, the resulting data is communicated out to the world in a useful manner. Before we take a closer look at each one of these components, it's important to note that the part itself is a consideration. How will the part be presented to the vision system? Part placement and orientation should be consistent and repeatable to achieve the best possible results. Proper lighting is critical to the success of an application. The type and position of a light should be carefully selected to maximize contrast of the features you plan to inspect and minimize contrast of everything else. This is like an electrical engineer setting up a system to give a high signal to noise ratio. You're trying to make the pieces you need to see or need to measure very clear and you want all the other items in the image as invisible as possible. To give you an idea of how you might do this, Let's look at some examples. Here are two photos of the same light bulb. And let's say that the objective is to see the tungsten filament between the two conductors. In the image on the left, the light is between the camera and the part. On the right, the light is behind the part, away from the camera. In the front lit image on the left, it's quite hard to see where the filament is. But in the backlit image, you can clearly see the filament making it very easy to check its presence and position. In this case, the light's position is critical. Here is another instance where the position of the light impacts the image significantly. In these images, the same part is lit with the same light. On the left, the light is placed near the camera lens. In the image on the right, the light is positioned lower and closer to the part. This clearly makes a big difference in the way the data matrix code shows up, as well as the outline of the part. This pair of images shows foil packaging with a printed expiration date. The light is positioned between the camera and the part in both instances, but a different type of light is used in each case. The example on the left is lit with a ring light, and clearly you would have a tough time locating, let alone reading the text in the image. The right-hand image, however, shows the same part lit with a dome light. You can see how dramatically the lighting changes the appearance of this part. In this case, it's the type of light that affects the image. If you can't see the necessary feature on a part, you can't measure it or read it. Proper lighting is key to acquiring a quality image with clearly visible features. Next, we'll discuss the lens. The purpose of the lens is to capture the image and deliver it to the sensor. The lens will determine your field of view, 
depth of focus, and your focal point. Generally, you'll find one of two different lens types in a vision system, an interchangeable lens or a fixed lens. Interchangeable lenses are typically C-mounts or CS-mounts. The right combination of lens and extension tube will acquire the best possible image. A fixed lens is part of a fully integrated smart camera. Fixed lenses typically use autofocus. This could be a mechanically adjusting lens or even a liquid lens, and it will automatically focus on the part. Autofocus lenses usually have a fixed field of view at a given distance. Lens choice can dramatically affect the appearance of an image. Here are two examples that were taken with the same camera using different lenses. The image on the left was taken using a 12 mm wide angle lens. This lens provides a larger field of view and less magnification than the image you see on the right, which was taken using a 25 mm lens. If you use a lens with a longer focal length, you will magnify the image and reduce the field of view. The lens delivers the image to the sensor in the form of light. The sensor typically uses CCD or CMOS technology to capture this light and convert it to a digital image. When you zoom in on this digital image, you can see that it's a collection of pixels. Low light produces dark pixels, while bright light creates brighter pixels. It's important to ensure your camera has the right sensor resolution for your application. Here's an example of the same image captured at different resolutions. On the left is an image captured with a 0.3 megapixel sensor, also known as a VGA sensor. On the right, the same image is captured by a 2 megapixel sensor. You can see that the image on the left has much less resolution and is more pixelated. The higher the resolution, the more detail an image will have, and therefore, the more accurate your measurements will be. The size of your parts, tolerances, and other application parameters will dictate your required resolution. The next step is vision processing. The processing function is truly at the core of machine vision, the mechanism for extracting the information that is required of an application. Processing the image may take place externally in a PC-based system or on board in a smart camera. Vision processing is performed by software with a wide variety of interfaces and tools available. Some common vision software tools include Locate, Count, Measure, and Decode. Tools are often used in sequence to achieve a desired result. A typical example of this is an inspection application that uses a Locate tool to locate a cap on a bottle. The Measure tool then measures its height to ensure that it's properly seated on the bottle. Vision processing consists of several steps, or algorithms, performed by the software. First, the image is acquired from the sensor. In some cases, pre-processing may take place to optimize the image and ensure that all the necessary features stand out. The software then finds the features that it's supposed to look for, runs measurements, and compares these to the specification. Finally, the results of these measurements will be communicated as pass or fail. This brings us to our fifth component, communication. As discussed earlier, the purpose of machine vision is to extract useful information from digital images. The communication of that data is critical. Typically, this is done by either discrete I.O. signal or data sent over a serial connection to a device that's logging information or using it. Many smart cameras have these connections built into them. Discrete I.O. points may be connected to either a PLC, which will use that information to control a work cell or an indicator such as a stack light, or directly to a solenoid, which might be used to trigger a reject mechanism. Data communication by a serial connection can be in the form of a conventional RS-232 serial output, or Ethernet. Some systems employ a higher level industrial protocol like Ethernet IP, which might be connected to a device like an HMI screen, as shown here, to provide visual confirmation that the system is running. 
Let's look at how these different parts work together to create a machine vision system. In this example, we are inspecting the fill level and cap alignment of water bottles. We'll begin the process by triggering the inspection when the bottle comes by. This will trigger the lighting to illuminate the bottle so that the camera can clearly see the necessary features. The lens and sensor will then capture and create a digital image and deliver it to the processor, which in this case is a PC. The software platform running on that PC will extract the required measurements to ensure that the fill level is correct and that the cap is properly seated on the bottle. The current status of this process can be communicated to and viewed on an HMI screen. Other actions may also take place based on the results of the inspection. So let's review. Machine vision systems may be integrated, such as a smart camera, or they may contain multiple components, such as a gigabit Ethernet camera solution. The five key components are the lighting, lens, sensor, vision processing, and communication. Lighting is critical to the success of a machine vision application and should make the features you're going to inspect stand out. The lens captures the image and delivers it to the sensor in the form of light. The sensor converts the light into a digital image. The processor uses software algorithms to extract useful data from the image and determine the results of the inspection. These results are then communicated in a useful manner. If you missed the previous presentations in this series, you can find them on our website at www.microscan.com as well as additional machine vision resources including white papers, case studies, and videos. Thanks for watching.